Hello, g'day, good morning, good evening, where you sit and listen. I hope you're doing really, really well. Uh, this is a medical cannabis show that promotes the healthy ways of growing organic practices and promotes legal activities. So I won't be promoting any illegal stuff or helping people in it with the legal things or stuff like that because I like to respect the law and I hope you do too. Today, we're going to be talking about pests and diseases. I should have changed the title and I will soon, but that's what the topic of today is, pests and diseases. So identifying pests, what type of diseases can be in cannabis plants, medical cannabis plants, and how to treat them. So I um, hope that you've got a few questions related to that. Uh, sorry for not giving any prior warning, but yeah, somebody asked for some help and I thought that would be a good title for today's show. So thank you to uh, that person that suggested that. And I'll wait a little bit longer and then I'll start sharing some slides on some, what's the first one I'm gonna go through? Plant pathology. I think that's, what was the course? Plant pathology and soil health. That was the name of the course. I did that uh, 2019. That's when I actually, no, I didn't. I did it 2020. It was written in 2019. Um, actually, I should even pin that. Today's topic. I'll see about that. Today's, I'll just pin it. Today's topic is... Cannabis, medical cannabis, pests and diseases, and DIS. Yes, there we go. Today's topic. So, have you got any questions? You're welcome. Drop them. Try and keep them. We'll try and stick to that topic. Um. All right. I'll just pin it now. No. Where is it? Go to the pin message. There we go. Sweet. Very good. So it's pinned. So there's. So that's the topic today, everybody. So I'll say g'day. There's a couple of people starting to arrive. Friedel Medical. Good morning to you. Good morning to Krita. Nice to see you. And to a friend suggested that. He needed a little bit of help with some pests and diseases, so I thought that would be a good title today. So I'll just put it in now, pinned it. So if you have any types of things that are related to that, that would be good, and I can show some slides and we can get a bit more clear on it. I'm going to start. Uh, so, all right, I'm going to have to share screen and stuff. That's not what I wanted. So I'm going to go through plant pathology first and hopefully the questions will start and I won't be boring you. Slide, share screen. All right. Try screen. Here we go. Very good. So I've got all of these to show. Oh, these are the different weeks and the different headings of them. Uh, so there's, vi there's bacterial diseases, viral diseases, fungal diseases in medical cannabis plants, the general life cycle of insects, principles and methods of pest control, uh, pests in different types of crops, uh, week four, inorganic pesticides, and then you've got your organopesticides, which are really bad, phosphates and py pyrethroids, which are good, and then it goes on to what else? I'm just reading these are the different headings I can pull slides from. Plant resistance, how to put in plants resistance. Pesticide hazards, penetration and distribution of pesticides. It shows how deep it goes and what wetting agents do. Uh, pesticide residuals in soil, how they reside there for some time, especially the organophosphates. It's terrible. That gets into the soil uh, water table too which is really bad. Actually, the soil water table in the United States, 90% of it's polluted from for that reason. Farmers just using too much of the bad stuff. They want to kill fast, yeah, but it's going to kill everything else. 
What else is there in here I can show? Integrated pest management, biofertilizers, which is very important. That's what you want to try and focus on, biofertilizers, the healthy ones that will work for you. You don't want herbicides or fungicides or insecticides if you, if you don't. Definitely the things to work for you. What else is there? That's about it. So I can go and show all those stuff. So I'll go back and see if there's any questions or anything related to that, just in case. If there's not, I'm gonna start and share what I think is good. So I'll stop there for a sec. I'll get back to, I'll put this background on, it's a bit better than seeing me. Uh, yes, good morning, Krita. Good morning, Lene. Top of the morning to you. Uh, today's topic is pests and diseases and medical cannabis. So if you've got any questions related to that, throw them up and I'm sure I'll try and put some related slides to make the point clearer. Uh, but I'm going to start and just share first this plant pathology and soil health because there's no real, um, to go through what's 90% of the problems, 80% of the problems in cannabis are going to be fungal diseases. So identifying fungus and what the conditions are that it grows in is very important. It's, all right, let's go in here. Okay, there's not too many. Let's see what, I haven't done this in a while. Let's see what sort of information there is. Fungal diseases, oh, I'm not getting that fallen into it. Fungal diseases in medical cannabis plants. So fungal diseases are things like rusts, smuts, roots and stem rots, botrytis, pythiums, um, pythium, yeah, fusarium. They're the ones that, um, that are really bad for medical cannabis. It's horrible. I've had them. It just destroys everything. And the reason why that is you'd introduce some anaerobic teas or that's how I did it. And it was, it was good, actually. I ended up working with it. But you don't want to put anything, if it doesn't smell good, don't put it in because highly likely that it's got anaerobic pathogens that will cause problems to your medical cannabis plants. Uh, also on top of the leaves, you've got your botrytis and your downy mildew. And that's got, well, you can easily see that, but big thing is humidity above the phylosphere, above the soil. And I'd like to show that chart actually. It's a water activity level. Actually, I'm gonna pull it up because it's very important for this. Uh, Hey, I'm not sharing it. Good. I just realised that. Hopefully someone was telling me that. You're not sharing. You're not sharing. Buds and hazards. G'day, mate. How's it going? Present. Now I can share. All right. Just as well. I just realised then. That was a bit odd. Fungal diseases in medical cannabis plants. Things are like rusts, smuts, roots and stem rot. And that's where I started here. So that's really good. So now I'm going to try and get into it and go back and show the, uh, how do I pull that up? Uh, I'll just shop it because this is a, it's a water activity chart, which shows the activity water level of different growths of bacteria and fungi. And it's extremely important. Because if you can sit under the 65% humidity or 60% humidity, you've kind of won the battle and you won't have any problems. Where am I looking? I didn't get this prepared at all, sorry. This is only just, I, I was checking messages prior to this show and then um, someone said that and I went, ah, oh, okay, well, I'd, you know, I'd like to help. So that was the whole title for today. So I, I hadn't had anything prepared. So the activity water level chart would be in, maybe in microbes. So I'm just trying to find this chart, which relates to the activity water level. And it's, oh, I haven't brought it up for a while either. It's so important. So I'm just trying to, through here, activity water level. Actually, I'll just show you. She's going, oh, you don't want to look at a screen blank. Okay, I'll just show you what I'm trying to find. Present, share screen, touch screen. 
Oh, yeah, and for those um, folk who are into the drama, there's been a lot of drama in Australia of late. I'm doing a separate video for that that explains everything and it shows all different documents and things that I think you'll be very amazed with because people have been lying out of their backsides and exaggerating grossly. You'll soon see the truth. Um, what I'm looking for, the activity water level. Nutrients. Yeah, those strips are bad. If you ever get those strips, I've got a, made a video on strips. Go and extensively watch it. I did um, quite a few a uh, different tests on what different things kill them and how long it takes under the microscope. And you can see the action happening. Just trying to find that water activity level. It says what microbes culture like Saccharomyces cerevisiae is a yeast and at 65% it could culture. So if you get anything above that, that's a problem. And then as it goes higher, that's why I don't believe in the vapor pressure deficit, with that VPD thing that a lot of um, people enjoy because the humidity gets too high and it has, has too much of a chance to let pathogens thrive. There's a, look, there's a leaf curl disease. It's a fungal disease in cannabis. That's pretty obvious what that is. Not good. You can get the, I can't remember the microbe. Is it Pseudomonas petita? Not sure. Um, it's one of those microbes anyway you can get and it combats it, kills it. Not kills it, but it's, it eats it. Works symbiotically to remove it. No, no. Oh, dead set. Okay, it's not there. Where I was hoping for it to be seen. Uh, what else we got? Martial artists. Good morning. Good morning. Cool. I'll watch the video of Thrips. Oh, mate, that's um, very interesting, the Thrips one. Yeah, I've put reverse osmosis water. I use ISO. There's a few other things that I put under the microscope, and you can sit and then count, and you can see how long it takes for them to die. And it's got a very interesting results. But I still I really, really would like to find this chart for to explain things a lot better because then you'll see it and you'll go, oh, wow. It's so important, but I can't really see it. It's microbes. What else would it be under? Maybe under fungi? It's activity water level. What's that in? It was in a video I did. So I explained the activity water level and fungi. Maybe we should just go into those videos. It'll take ages to look through. Oh. Oh, that's a bit of a shame. Oh, well, I'm just going to continue. It's taken too long. All right, get back to it. Um, see if any questions, if you've got anything on some diseases and pests in equal cannabis, hopefully I can enlighten you and share some slides. There we go, back to it. So, no, I'm not going through all that stuff. The business too much heavily into fungi. Um, fungi, no, that's the different types that a collection of hyphae is referred to as mycelium. You know how the difference between yeasts and mold is that mold has mycelium, has hyphae on it, those things that stand upright, and a group of hyphae is called mycelium, which is the white stuff and which sits underneath the soil. And it needs that humidity to keep thriving in so that's why if you reduce the humidity, you'll get rid of it. That's a good way to combat uh, organically your problems that you might have. Rust. That's See the rust on there? It just looks like rust. <laughs> so you don't want that. Just lower the humidity again. Uh, pythium species are many bacterial pathogens. And, and many... Oh, that's facultative. facultative. I'm not going to go into the facultative and... Um, obligate parasites. Powdery mildew is the stuff that you see on the top, like that. It's on the top of the leaf. It's white, and the stuff underneath you'll see it's called downy mildew. And if you've got problems with that, uh, they reckon Bacillus subtilis used to help. But what I do, I've got um, fungal resistant genetics. So I've done a breeding program, and the ones that I like, and I've gone and made them 
resistant genetics uh, by doing a few things. So when I test it, I don't get those types of things anymore. It's really good. I only get it on dead tissue, pathogen biology. Uh, Asperosa, no. Symptoms of plant diseases caused by fungi. Well, you're going to get wilting is a, because it's called fusarium wilt. Why can't I show it? Where's all my sections on that? I'll stop for a sec. Let's see. Mimetics. There you go, mate. See if there's any questions, not really. That's cool. Today, someone asked me some for some help with some identifying pests and diseases and cannabis. So that's what I'm trying to go through some stuff. Uh, plant science, plant deficiencies, no. Really, maybe it's under that. Chlorosis, oh it is, okay. I don't even know what I was trying to find. These are, nutrition, these are nutritional deficiencies though. Well, here's one. This is chlorosis virus in cannabis. So you can see that it's, first it looks like you think, oh, it's nitrogen. And then the tips go, tip up. you think, oh, it's phosphorus. Um, it's potassium, sorry. And then you realize, oh, none of those things are fixing it. Because usually I can do a remedy of a 100 ppm synthetic foliar spray so and then that would remedy it would fix the problem and after doing that a few times I th it wasn't fixing it so i thought oh, oh what sort of virus do i have so i looked into it first further and i've got a chlorosis virus that was induced by spraying that was done close i suppose you could say well not close but it traveled through the air the uh Roundup and yeah, induce this. And what was the bacteria that it actually proliferated? Pseudomonas syringi. That's right, Pseudomonas syringi. And to do that, to fix this one, because this is, well, it's it was on its way to death, as you know. Um, there's not much you can really do with that. It just keeps dying and dying and it eats out all the chlor green chlorophyll pigment so it can't photosynthesize anymore and everything just turns to dead and it wilts and drops off. So to, for me to do that, I had to exchange the endophytes inside of it. So I had to go and do a tissue culture type setup where I exchanged the endophytes to keep some species alive. And it worked. Uh, what else? Any cannabis stuff? No, not getting into deficiencies. Oh, there you go. There's chlorosis virus. Look how yucky it looks. See down here, it starts to, those tips are going brown, so it's gone necrotic. So that after that, those cells are dead. No chance. While they still got the yellow, they don't produce as much energy through the xylothin that's in the pigments. Um, so there's chances it's just going to drop off. Let's see if there's anything else. Any other? What's this one? Pathogen response. Uh, okay, no, no, that's a bit of breathing. Oh, are you kidding? I didn't. I'm not sharing again. All right, sorry. I can go back and do it again. Sorry, thank you for the input. Present. Uh, share screen. There we go. Now it'll work better. We don't want to see that one either. We want to see. Oh, I closed it off. Plant deficiencies. So this was the chlorosis virus. So you can see. It looks like nitrogen at the start. You think, oh, nitrogen, cool. And then the tips start to go brown. And you think, oh, potassium. And then you look closer and you get a magnesium where it's sort of happening all over. It's wrecking with the pigment because the chlorophyll pigment has a magnesium at its centre and then around it has the nitrogen, nitrate. Look at that, terrible. There's a overall picture of what the leaves look like. Cannabis chlorosis virus, not very good. I knew want to see leaf curl disease, I didn't show either. Um, where is leaf curl disease? There's fusarium. So see how it gets fusarium wilt. 
so it starts to wilt off. So if you see stuff like that, it's too, way, way too late. Even can even tissue culture might fix it. But here's some prevention. So in areas where pathogens are established in outdoor soils, identify genetically resistant cultivars. Yeah, well, if you haven't got that, uh, Trichoderma species, including Trichoderma aspirillium and Trichoderma hazarium, show suppression, suppression of these diseases when applied to the root trench in containers culture. So I use Trichoderma hazarium. That's in a product. Um, if you look around in products, there's quite a few out there you'll find that they've got that in it. And one of the products that I use has that in it. It's only got uh, four other things in it too. It's very, very beneficial. I really like that one. Um, so that's, yeah, Fusarium wilt. See here on the on the right, this one would, so the roots got attacked, attacked really badly here and these other ones might have genetic resistance in it um, because these ones nearly dead. So it would have traveled through the soil through the rhizosphere around the roots, and um, these ones would have a resistance. So this person would just let them die, and they would culture off these ones, and they would grow these ones, because there's a high chance you're probably gonna get it the following season. What else have I got in here? Plant nutrition note. What is chlorosis virus? Been through that one. Rusted mites. See if you've got this curling here. It looks like that's a high temperature. So if you've got that where the, the margins on the leaf, that's what they call on the edge there, uh, if they're facing upwards, that means that it's too hot. Another symptom can be a infection, that the leaves are telling you something's going wrong inside. And one of those can be the russet mites. That's what this one's saying. So treatment of the russet mites, you could go and get, I'll read what this says and then I'll say in my bit, Early detection is key prevention to this as they're very difficult to eradicate. They're so small, they're like little dots. So main things happen under the leaves. So if you've got anything that's going, if you've got a leaf that with any necrotic spots on it or anything with spots or looking irregular, just flip it, spin it 180 degrees in your fingers and then look real closely. And then if you see anything moving, or if they're around the necrotic bits, that means you've got an infestation of, of something and it's going to travel. So rip that leaf off. But otherwise, you can. it's just a good way to identify what's going on with the health. You know, I always look under a leaf that's got any type of spots under it to see what's caused it. Um, and treatment of it, I'll see what else it says. Horticultural oils or insecticidal soaps, they're pretty good. Can be used as provincial knockdown. So try those first because they're organic. Uh, they're like biobotanical oils, like you get... Um, I'm not going to say the names of them, but they've got different ginger and onion and those types of canine pepper, different things like that inside of them. And then the insecticidal soaps are the potassium fats of so, potassium fats of solid acids. It's those words in that around potassium solids of fatty acids, <laughs> something like that. So they're organic too. And then after that, if it doesn't work, um, well, actually, no, that's an option. But what I'd do is I would go and get some Montedurensis. Montedurensis is a species of beneficial oh, bacteria. No, it's not. It's an insect. Anyway, it's a beneficial. It's a beneficial, and it'll help with the russet mites. It'll target and help with them. And then I'd also get something for the soil, like Hypoaspis. It's a um, are beneficial as well that will sort out problems in the soil so i'd go with the, that route before even trying to do any types of sprays and stuff and then if that didn't work then i'll try and do a little bit more uh right see what else we've got coming up here so it looks like uh it's deficiency that's nitrogen i'm not getting into that i want to share any no potassium potassium phosphorus good no Okay, that's it, I think. It's not going back any further up that way. Is there any up there? Oh, this is cool. This is the, remember I was speaking about before how the, I had some Pseudomonas uh, syringe, which was causing that chlorosis virus. I had that inside the tissue, and this was in this tissue. So after I 
remove the the replace the endophytes, look at the different growth. So it's pretty cool. So this is the new growth here with its new endophytes in there. And down here is the old ones. So see how look all the plants, all the tissue and the cells aren't looking very healthy at all. But the new ones, look above here, sweet love and no worries, mate. So you can fix stuff. Oh, there you go. Endophyte removal. Oh, yep. Yeah. On the left, an existing plant, and on the right, one that's fixed. So that was a bit of a process, but it, it worked. It was an experiment to see if it worked. And as you can see here, that's healthy as on the right, and that's exactly the same on the left. It might have even been cut from the same one, just showing that it works. Symptoms of viroid. Yes, yeah, if you've got virus infections in your medical cannabis plant, symptoms are stunting growth as well. That's a pretty bad one. The deformation of the leaves and fruit we've talked about and the stem necrosis. So any stem deaths or any leaf deaths. So I've sort of covered, didn't cover stunting of the growth. But yeah, the reason why it stunts the growth is because the plant has to activate its immune system and then it has different pathways that it activates. So instead of into putting all its nutrition into its growing and growing and, and uh, multiplying of cells and its growth, it will go into fighting whatever's trying to attack it. So that's why you get your stunted growth. Rust. Late leap spot. Uh, all right, I'll keep going. There might be something here. Soil analysis. Uh, copper. No. 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 Try and see if there's any type of bacteria or viral or fungal infections related types. No. Right on, that's about it. Oh, this is pretty cool. This is a pH chart in reference to fungal and bacteria, fungus and bacteria, with all of your elements that a plant needs. And because it's we're talking today on fungi and bacteria, um, you can see that if the pH gets below five, there's a very low chance that bacteria will survive. And they're probably all the problematic ones because we want them to be between 6.5 and 7.5 in the neutral range. So that's where you'll find that most of these elements, or we'll talk about fungi, most of these things are thick in. And you want to try and culture up those beneficials that are in that range. You don't want to culture up the ones that are down here. I'll stop sharing and see if there's any questions. Put that background on. No questions. Very good. All right. Everyone's loving today. Um, all right. I'll get back into sharing the next thing. Maybe I should share oh, necrosis. Oh, yeah, that's right. I went into that. Which I didn't show the activity of water level, unfortunately. Oh, well. <laughs> Coming over everything. But yeah, please drop your questions if you've got anything that in relating to any pests or diseases in medical cannabis. I'm just getting back to sharing the screen, seeing what else I can find. This piece, okay. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm pressing the wrong button. <laughs> Here we go. There we go. All right. So back to it. It was this one. Some necrotic symptoms. Uh, blast cankers. This is stem cankers. They're like little tiny things you'll see on the stem. They're like little shells like thing. And that's a called a canker. Dampening off is another problematic thing. Happened by pythium in the rhizosphere. So there's, that'll happen underneath, and that's more so happens if you've got so your substrate that hasn't aerated it enough, that will generate too much areas where there won't be any oxygen, and in those oxygen-lacking areas is where pythium loves. So if you've got those areas, there's a chance you'll get that too. Fungi and fungi-like organisms such as pythium 
and phytoplethora plethora, collectively cause more diseases in plants than the rest of the pathogens as a whole. Yes, pythium's not good. I've had it a few times. That's why I had to create a resistance in the genetic line. There's more than 10,000 species of the fungi and fungi-like organisms are known to be pathogens to plants. So there's heaps. And in your substrate, if you're using organic soil, you'll find that in the organic soil, you've got um, just as much pathogens there as good microorganisms. And if everything's that's in healthy soil, that's what you'd expect to have. And when it starts to get a little unhealthy is when the range gets too high in pathogens. Symptoms. So if you were going to spray then and get rid of everything, do a soil drench, yeah, you'd get rid of all the microbes and stuff and all the pathogens as well. But what would happen is these pathogens thrive fast. So they would go in and go, wow, look at this virgin soil area I can just multiply very fast on. And then you'll have all the bad things that will multiply. So from spraying, it's just an ongoing problematic effect. Try and do everything what you can before spray with bad things. Symptoms caused by fungi pathogens mainly differ from the symptoms with the rest of the pathogens. Yeah, because you'll, you'll see necrotic symptoms, abnormal growth and development, you'll get some wilting, abnormal growth and development, warts, powdery scabs, leaf curls, some galls, Actually, we don't have galls, I don't, not that I've seen anyway. Other symptoms, gamosis. Uh, usually gamosis is already um, established and that's the result of the weeping of, it's a, oh, there you go, it's a coloured exudate from diseased tissue. Leaf drop, wilts, rusts, let's cover that. Smuts, mildews, yep, covered that one. Perigots, haven't covered that, but we don't shouldn't have to worry about perigots. Rust from fungal pathogens from the order Ural delines. So you can see there, it's just starting to form its hyphae. So they're little microspores, that's its seed there, waiting for it to reach its right favorable conditions. And then that would start to produce hyphae. So it's gone multiplied and because it's gone too dry, it hasn't been able to spread too well. So if you were to raise the humidity to above whatever this requires, probably around 70%. So if this was in an area around 70% or close to other tissue, which would raise the humidity as well, this will germinate and start and multiply. Downy mildew. Yes, you know what downy mildew, that's underneath the leaves on the medical cannabis and the beneficial fungi. Yes, there's lots that you should use. It's, you'll see them on the, they're, they're expensive, but you don't have to put many. You just put them where the roots are because you want to put your beneficials right where the roots are. So when you're doing a transplant, for instance, you might put just a tiny little sprinkle, say enough for your thumb, just on the roots, and then that will sort itself out. It will work with the plant, and if it's not symbiotic, it won't thrive. But if it is symbiotic, it'll take over and it'll work with the plant in its tissue, in between the protoplasm, in between the cells. And then you'll, if you put it any cells under the microscope, you'd see all the hyphae inside of the cell in the tissue. And that means it's cultured through it. Like um, rhizophagus irregularis is a really good one to do that. Um, what else have we got here? Decay. Okay, we don't want that. Mycorrhizae appears to be highly beneficial, often necessary for optimum plant growth. The reason being because it can, the mycorrhizae, it's the, myco means fungus and rhizae means roots. So it's the fungus around the roots area. That is beneficial because it can multiply every, I haven't timed it, but um, it multiplies every minutes to every, probably every minutes, every half an hour to 40 minutes, it would at least multiply. And the, cell tissue of plants is about 16 hours. So for roots to grow, it would be putting out every 16 hours an extra cell and to try and suck up all the benefits. But this beneficial fungi or the mycorrhizae, that's spreads so fast and grows so fast, it's sort of like a network of extension of the roots. And when the exudates work with the mycorrhizae, 
it'll exchange different elements that are, the plant's roots require. So that's why the beneficial fungi is very beneficial to the medical cannabis plants. Control. Uh, it's just good health. You want a high bricks level. That's one thing that you comes into it with this bricks. If you want to know, if you want to go in, into somebody else's place and you think, have they got a chance in getting any problems, diseases? You can take a bricks reading and um, see what the go is with it. And if the levels are, um, if it's in veg, if the levels are like five or under five, it probably it has to improve its health. And if the levels are in flower or what do you want? 13 is good. So if the levels are below 10 in flower, it's not good as well. And there's a chance you'll get some sort of problems. So you could, you'd investigate further from that. You'd look at what you're feeding, what's around the roots, uh, what's in the air, what how's the gases exchange, all that sort of stuff. Uh, cultural practices, conclusion, common, all right. Okay, very good. I'm just trying to find related stuff. That was the fungi, I think, we went through. Soil pasteurization. <laughs> pasteurization means that you're killing off the uh, pathogens and seeds. So when you're doing composting, you want it to get into the thermophilic range, which is above 65 Celsius or about 180 Fahrenheit. For 30, and this says it gets above 82 Celsius for 30 minutes is all it requires to get rid of the pathogens. So that's something that's cool too. So I wouldn't be trying that. So you could, um, for instance, put a bag around it and raise the temperature out in the sun, put black around it, put a temperature gauge inside of it, and it would raise the temperature to get way hot than that. Um, but yes, that's, that's something anyway that you can do. All right. Sweet. That was really good. All right. Um, next thing, we go to 37. No questions, huh? All right. That's all right. Looks like that drama has um, halved the numbers. <laughs> so it's amazing how a lot of people just take one side. My side of the story wasn't even told. That's why I'm going to share something this week. That is my side of the story. All right. So let's go back and maybe I can show some slides for, well, that was fungal. What about doing some bacterial diseases? But they're not real prevalent in cannabis. Um, anybody got any suggestions? <laughs> so I'm mainly doing this for you guys as well, guys and girls. So I'm going to go back into that one again. Path pathogens. Uh, pathology, plant pathology. And bacterial diseases, fungal diseases, general life cycle. It might get too technical. What's another thing that's going to help? Inorganic pesticides. Maybe that, actually. Yeah. Oh, I've got another better course than this. I've got my organic farming. That went heavily into it, I'm sure. Yes. Cover crops. All right. Here we go. Yeah. Here we go. Let's talk about something else. This is a bit more interesting, actually. Screw on. Uh, Cecil, hey. Yeah. Well, the, the problem with they've all, they're losing out on um, opportunity to learn because that cycle, it's amazing that. Um, well, turns out Nexus isn't even a professor. So, um, yeah, it's, you're just learning off bud, um, bro science. So it's nothing to do with me. Good luck to them. But, yeah, I'd just like to show the people my side of the story so people um, just can go, oh, oh, okay. And I'm, I'll be showing facts with papers and photos and stuff like that so it's legit. Uh, bank records. So it's not all just he say, she say. Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> G'day, Dave. How you going, mate? Hope you didn't miss much. Uh, not really. Well, you did a bit, Dave. Um, 
with today's topic is the pests and diseases in medical cannabis. And I was just going through fungal diseases because cannabis has 90% of its problems are fungal diseases. And I was just going through them all and what to do, some remedies, some beneficials that you could use to get yourself out of the problems. And also mentioning about numbers are down probably because of the, um, yeah, the drama that two people have created. And it's once you find the story out, you'll go, wow, because I'm going to put a video out this week. You know, get back to it. I don't like drama. It's, it's a waste of time. They're school kids, those two. <laughs> I'll always go around in circles for them. Right, uh, what was the shaman? Don't give the fools your time and energy. Yeah, that's right. That's fine. I can only just touch on the topic and then get back to the proper stuff. We're here to bloom and share good stuff, share knowledge about and experiences in cannabis, medical cannabis, so we can all help each other. So this is another cool thing, light traps. You're doing light traps help a lot and another thing that's never spoken about is pheromone traps so you can go if you know what species you're working with you can go and squash all them up put them in the blender and that's a pheromone trap to lure suspected mating partners yellow sticky traps should always be used but they're used not to control like it says here they're used as a first instance because if you're going to control white flies if you're going to you know flying insects you'd have to have heaps and heaps of them so um i use them more as a early warning signal so you'll have these yellow cards up like here and then you'll go down and you think you just look at them and it'll just be oh look there's a couple of dots wow and then you'll investigate more you might pull out your microscope and try and then you'll write into the search engine the symptoms okay long skinny object long skinny insect um, medical cannabis those types of things, and then you'll be able to identify and put it, search, do an image search, or actually one of those search things now has a image search, so I don't know if it works, but you might be able to take a photo and press image search on one of the search engines. But that's how to identify it, and then you'll come up with how to treat it botanically or organically after you find out what you have. We don't have to fruit bag. Then you want biological control. So biological control is the use of natural enemies to control pests. It's the safest, best way. They get in with the plant. They will be beneficial with the plant. They'll only want to attract the bad things like aphids on, with cannabis uh, to sort out. Um, you want ladybug, ladybugs or these hover flies. So it's, that's an example. Natural predator, which will really fix it good. But you have to get the right ones. And then it works. If you don't get the right ones, like people say use ladybugs for everything. No, ladybugs only eat aphids. So they don't do anything for spider mites and other sorts of that. Spider mites, you want um, cucumerous. Um, what's the other one? Monsterenesis works all right too, but mainly cucumerous and californicus. Those two for spider mites as an example. Types of biological pest control. Cards with trichoderma in them. So they can just be released. So you just put a big mount on your stem with the problem in there, and then it will slowly get released in it. The eggs hatch, conservation, um, no. Population dynamics of pests and predators. Uh, that's pretty terrible. Releasing natural enemies, and then enemies, bad thing. Bacillus syringensis, BT is very good. Yes, it controls caterpillars. But you can also use neem, which is organic. Uh, but Bacillus syringensis, it's what's the other one? What's the called, one that causes white muscular disease? It's not. Is it this one? No, because they all just got caterpillars. Because oh, I've used it. Um, it's not BT. Bavaria bassiana. That's another beneficial that causes white muscular disease. And it's in that product I was telling you before with the other five ingredients. I don't want to name it because I don't want to say sponsors and all that sort of stuff. Fungi work against pathogens. So if you get some like Trucaria hazarium, which is, is also in that one that I've used, um, that one with the five things in it, that's one of the other things. And the other two is Bacillus subtilis and I can't remember the other one. But yeah, there's only five things, so it's pretty pretty good. So you just inoculate, put a little um, fingernail on the roots in a transplant, 
and then you know it's going to culture up in the plant, working symbiotically, working with you to help you. There we go. Look, Bavaria bassiana is an entomopathogenic fungi that causes white musculin disease in a range of insects. So it's very, very beneficial. Hey, Koski, how's it going, mate? Nice to see you. That's working. Good. This today's on pests and diseases in medical cannabis and ways to fix them, identify them, stuff like that, and control them. Um, some plants contain components that are toxic to insects. With these extracts applied to infested crops, they are called botanical pesticides. So your first range of options, botanicals. That's like your um, onion, your cane, pepper, those types of things. Uh, and here's as a directin of the neem tree, pyrethrums, which are increments. You can grow some chrysanthemums and get them out of it. There's also pyrethrums with the U, and they're synthetic. So be real careful with that wording. And rotten iron, that's the smell that um, attracts flies. So you can get that from uh, skunkweed. You know, skunkweed out smells. All the people in North America going, oh, yeah, I'm not extracting rotten iron. I don't even get close to that plant. And nicotine, believe it or not, is a really good botanical. See so, yeah, how people are smoking that. Amazing, eh? And limonene, which is in cypress, citrus, have been used as botanical pesticides and all those other ones. There's a few brands, um, one that starts with M, that has quite a few of them in it that works quite well. I'm just touching on all this. Neem. Neem's really good. A lot of them, my courses are from India, my university I study at. And that's neem's the, I think India is the largest exporter of neem in the world from there uh, when they extract as a directin from it. And it works really, really well. It's a real good organic thing. As you can see, I'll just read this. It's active ingredients as a directin. It both deters and kills many species of caterpillar, thrips, and white flies and other insects that don't want to be established that are problematic to medical cannabis. Neem seed contains a higher amount of neem oil than the other parts of the plant. A neem solution loses its effectiveness within eight hours after preparation and when exposed to direct sunlight. So most effective to apply neem is in the evenings directly after preparation under humid conditions so it lasts longer. So this is why it's also good. So it'll, it'll vanish the next day. So if any butterflies, any cool things are coming in, bees, it's not going to harm them. So it's a really, really good, effective botanical pesticide. Uh, and then it goes heavily into neem. Neem cake is the, down here, neem seed cake is the extracting. That's the afterbirth or the results from extracting the azadrectum out of the plant. And it can be used as a biofertilizer. It provides macronutrients essential for plants' growth and employs improves soil quality and enhances quality of crops. It's got an NPK of um, about a five is to three is to two. So it's quite good with nitrogen as well. All right, that'll do. Oh, due to their no, talk about that. neem applications and commercial products available worldwide. Uh, okay, these are the products that they've got with neem in them. <laughs> So if you don't want to just go and get neem oil and make up your own brew, you can go and someone else has made it for you, probably put in it 99% water. The actions. Uh, this gets a bit heavily into it. Do you know about how neem works by its different pathways? No, I reckon people say. Mode of action of pyrethium. No. Pyrethrums and pyrethrins. Actually, let's go back and read that. Pyrethrin are insecticidal chemicals extracted from dried pyrethrum flower. Well, let's see if it's fact check. I don't think I was right before when I said the ums. But there is a synthetic version of you've really got to watch it when you when you buy it. What's the synthetic version then? Come on. Pyrethrum powder is made from dried flowers, yes. Oh, that's how to do it. So if you want to get your chrysanthemums. Come back, look at this one. You'll see the recipe right there on the, on the right-hand side, how you crush them up and do the stuff. Break them down. Rotenone, methods, nicotine. Well, 
It contains illegal to grow in some countries. Check your laws. I like to respect laws. Citrus oil. Vinyl oil. <laughs> wow. Vinyl oil is from um, lavender and it's nanny spasmodic terpene. It's found in small quantities. That's interesting. Yeah, essential oils. Quite a lot of essential oils are things that will help in nature, control things, are that mode of actions. Yeah, so limonene causes spontaneous activity. It's a nerve agent. Oh, anyway, get on with it. Plant protection from green chili and garlic. Here's another way of doing it from making your own. So there's a bit of a, a recipe. Notice how they put urine in here. That's from um, cattle. So if your cattle don't have any sprays or if you don't have any antibiotics or anything like that, you can probably use your urine or if you don't. Um, so there's a little recipe to make up your own plant protection with green chili and garlic. Here's one a plant protection using probably a even better one using neem and cow dung and the urine. So the reason why this is a bit better is because the cow dung is going to introduce a bit of more pathogens in there. And when they're put, if even if they're anaerobic, which they would have started to be to break down the cow dung, when they're put on the leaves sprayed, they've got no chance to multiply because that anaerobic atmosphere is not there. So this works really good with a lot of natural beneficials in it. It's not just like when you make your, um, your compost cow dung, organic cow dung. Seed treatments can be also done by our soil treatments. I'm getting off the topic here. Tillage, planting. Okay, nutritional, nutritional composition of some organic, no, chilies. Might have passed the bit I wanted to show, growth regulators, no. All right, stop sharing. Much else been said? No, no shame. Oh, Pusky. Yes, like Dave says, get rid of the drama. I'm getting sick of it. It is stupid, mate. The thing is, we all stick to, we're all cannabis lovers. Why even have drama? We should be sticking together. It's crazy. It's crazy. All right, I'll get back and I'll share 52 minutes. There must be some, there's another course, another few courses here. Organic farming, how about that one? Nanotech and agriculture. And some other good ones with pathogens. Cell biology, uh, that one, advances in agricultural engineering. There'd probably be something there. All right, I'll, I'll share. This is from another, oh, don't want to pick that one up. Enrichment cultures, no thanks. Oh, this is a compost method. I'll see if there's anything in here. So I'll share the screen just in case there's something on botanicals, because this course was called Organic Farming. Uh, this one. So this is to do with the compost, different methods of compost. It's how to get the worms out, vermi castings, types of worms. Oh, there's a director. Oh, it's a cedar Um this goes into the microbes a bit more. There's some traps, good. We might be getting into it. Some homemade traps, different ways to make some pheromone traps here, like in the tri triangle or hanging, a light trap. Put a little light bulb in there and hang them around it. Sticky traps, so there's some good little methods too. Tree banding, ah, good, this wasn't discussed before. If you've got things that crawl up the stem or noticing things like that, you can put yellow sticky tape just around the stem so the whole thing just just cut off a bit and then stick it together with sticky tape so it bands around it like that. Not too tight where you're going to cut off restriction because remember it's going to grow, so it'll probably pull apart soon because um, that's where the hell the plant breathes in its vascular bundle. Um, tree paste. Yeah, you can make up some gummy goo and do the same sort of method with some botanicals like they were saying before. You know how you can crush garlic powder and onion powder and things like that, cane powder. You make it into a paste and you can paste it on the, on the stem. The stem cankers, for instance. Neem, I touched just on neem. Neem oil is great. I think actually neem's, um, it's illegal in Canada. I'm sorry. It got outlawed in, uh, I think it was 2018. Um, Turmeric, custard apple, different types of botanicals that you can use for pesticides. Chili, yep. 
cayenne powder, capsicum, uh, castor oil, lantana. So lantana and methanol extracts show insecticidal property against stored pests, pulse beetles, marigolds. Uh, what's this picture I'm looking at on here? The fungus is very effective on insects. Yeah, but how do you get it? Trichoderma and Trichoderma hazarium. I've talked about that one. Mycorrhizae, other practices for disease control. Sulfuring. Uh, yeah, you can burn some sulfur that has, it puts a little film on it, on the plant, and the, the sulfur, wettable sulfur, it's supposed to be, puts out a layer for the um, fungus so you won't get it in later life, in later growth when the buds get tighter. But to do that, just drop the humidity. Have humidity gauges everywhere and in the worst humidity spots and don't let it get over 65. If it does, you need to dehumidify somehow or raise the temperature. Because remember that humidity is a relative to temperature so that if one goes up, the other goes down. Acidic clays, milk. Milk can also be sprayed. They've said that that's supposed to be good for fungal diseases. I've never tried it. Uh, but yeah, it's. I've heard that from back in the day. A few of these courses have taught. Seed germination. Oh, okay. Looks like we're out of that. Yep. Out of that one. Good, that course is done. Stop sharing. Oh, a bit of chat's going on here. What's going on here? Scroll up a bit. Uh, all right. Terence McKenna down under. G'day, mate. He's just saying that he's... Um, Medicinal habits have just improved because he's gone and snagged himself a mighty. So he's going to have a snazzy time and just get all of the benefits. The mighty is one of the best ways to smoke medical cannabis if you're not if you're on a very tight budget because they don't use much and they get you there. I've got I've got a mighty I've got a mighty plus as well and they really really work really radly. All the other portable vapes for me haven't got me there. It might wear off quick, it might only last for an hour, but the fact is if you're using a thumbnail size. You can also use um, other things in the Mighty too. Resins. The Mighty, what's Terence say? The Mighty Plus is a vaporizer I grabbed and bought. Phenomenal. He loves it. Definitely worth every cent. Good on you, Terence. Uh, quick bongs. Oh, here's a bit of positiveness. He's hit quick the bongs as well. He's hit a dab cartridge and said, and he's loving his health. Oh, that's some good work, mate. Congratulations. Yes, that was the one. That, that was the name I didn't want to mention before, but for all those people, if you can read, that's another good one that works as well with botanicals. It's an organic solution. So you go and fire it, and that's got garlic oil in it. That's really, really rad. It's got a few other things in it that are very botanical. Uh, hey, Klaus Kate Mysterio, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. I'm putting the video out this week, guys, for to explain the drama. I've got some good proof, some notes, bank records, etc., proving it all. You'll realise how it's all a load of rot. Just wanted to say that because it's taken a bit of my audience and it's a bit of a shame that people would go and follow and believe the rot. And back to the show. Tried to quit a few months ago. He didn't. Why? I didn't work. But the mighty's going to help. Really quit smoking now. Good on you, mate. It's nice to hear, Terence. Yeah, that mighty uses such a small amount and it makes that small weed go such a long way. Yeah, it's full on. I've never used pu okay. Oh, if, if you've never used it, it's good to have in the kit because it's got a range of botanicals in it. It doesn't just have garlic or onion. It's got, I think, uh, it's got about five different things in it. So it's quite, quite good. Just like the one that starts with M, it's got quite a few in it too. G'day, Vin, how you going, mate? Uh, this is, I'm um, just going through, right at the end of the show, it's on fungus, no, it's plant pests, can, medical cannabis pests and diseases. And because fungus is 90% of the cannabis diseases and problematics, I went through that mainly. So I'll get back to it. Oh, it's 59 minutes. Um, I'll see if I've got what else I've got to share. In that meantime, please write your questions if you have any or suggestions, or even suggestions for like next week's show, 
uh, stuff like that. I don't mind because I'm here for you guys and girls. Uh, I'll see if there's anything in advances in agricultural engineering course. Actually, here I'll show you. I'll show you as well because it's pretty cool. It was, um, especially the breeding bits at the end were rad. Go to Mighty Plus. Yes, I support the Mighty. It might be 500 bucks, but it's going to save you hundreds in cannabis. Absolute hundreds in your overall. If you're on a budget, mate, save up for the Mighty Plus. It will save you heaps. I've got the Mighty Plus because of the USB charging. Ah, good point. I didn't um, say that. Yes, the old Mighty, it doesn't, it's got a round plug and it's a pain to charge. Where the Mighty Plus, it has USB charging. Good point, mate. Yes, yeah, so if you're on a budget, I really support that one. Wish I got, oh, what's the name say? Wish I got the Mighty Plus 2. I got the PAX 4 because it was more affordable. It's okay, but I think I would have been better off with the Mighty Plus as well. Yeah, because the PAX's chamber, it's a little tiny bit smaller. And I had a PAX, I've got a PAX number one, and um, it just never got me there. I like the LEDs in the front, though. I do have to say, and how how um, like snazzy it looks with the outside container. It's all iridescent and cool. <laughs> but yeah, the Mighty Plus, like Karen says, is worth every dollar. Yep, I agree with you. Well said, mate. The Mighty Plus legit changed the way I cannabis program. Yeah, it's very economical. Probably out of everything because vaporizing it does take a little bit more. But to do it in the mighty, it just still gets you there. It's it's awesome. Uh, I was going to share again. What was I going to show? Oh, that's right, the last one. So while I'm waiting for any questions or any suggestions or if you're going to talk amongst yourselves, I don't mind because there's a pretty good community here. I'm going to show on this last bit. So I'll see, see. Just in case there's, this is an advancement in agriculture course I did a couple of years back. Uh, X-ray fluorescence is rad. Electromagnetic. No, oh, this is more in testing. What's those cannabis ones? Uh, that's looking all right. Day 14. Very good. Oh, it's Death Bubba S2. Looking very nice. Yes, that has a... That's the GML cut from BC. That has a dominant DWF gene, meaning if I plant three seeds, two out of three of them would come up with a dwarfing characteristic. Because a plant having, what, 35, cannabis plant 35,000 genes, you don't know which ones are going to express. So that's why we do our little pheno hunts. You can do a pheno hunt with two, two seeds as well. All it means is you're just looking for different characteristics, morphogenic expressions. Uh, where are applications? Surface water, irrigation use efficiency is very important. Measuring evaporative transfer. All right, looks like we're not going to have much here. I was hoping it might have something new. No. All right. Um. All right, what's, oh, I got a few more questions. Genetic memory farm, nice to see you, mate. One day we will come up with a vape that is actually efficient. Good evening, peeps. I hope you are all safe and feeling good. Now I have to look up this mighty. Oh, what? Mate, you're gonna be, it's, I, you know, I'm, I, I'm a man of my word, like what I say is what I feel and that's what I, that's what I do. Um, the Mighty works. All the other things I've tried portable don't get me to where I want and it feels like I want to have more where the Mighty does. It might be 500 bucks Australian, but it's um, it fair dink and works if you're on a budget. It's so good. And for the terpene profile, it's great. And cleaning it out too. Um, Terence, you're going to have a great fun when you clean it out. You're going to go and um, open up the little top bit and you're going to look at all this gooey resin and go, wow. You pull out your thousand times microscope and go, wow. <laughs> It's pretty funny. Um, nice to see you, GMF. 
my mighty, Terence says my, his mighty, shadows his ariser XQ2 desktop vape. Wow, that's big words. Wow, that's some, shows you he loves it too. Nice one. I would still use the X, he would still use his desktop ariser, Terence says, if it was on charge. Oh, yeah. I, the mighty you can use when it's charging as well. I still get out my vape, yeah. Death Puppet S2. Yeah, it's cool. Well, you end up, you might get some seeds. Um, if Australia goes legal, you know, within, I'm not going to say when, but if it does go legal, I will be giving my giveaway every time too. See giveaway and I can give away some Death Bubba seeds. Uh, what's a dwarfing characteristic? Asked Terence. It's when the plant will stay stunted. It's like a stunted growth. When it doesn't grow high, you might get, it's going to grow a foot for total growth. And the problem with that is the buds will be too tight and it can't breathe inside of it. So it's, you're going to, there's a high chance that you'll get mold or bud rot growing inside of it. So it's not a characteristic that I look for, that I want, that I try and breed with. I try and breed that out of it. Um, so that's why if I was going to breed with, which I have with Death Bubba, I'd um, choose the cultivar, the phenotype that didn't have any of the dwarfing characteristics. Good question, mate. Thanks for the question. Well, I just laugh and just laugh and hard. That's the way. You will be blown away by how chronic and amazing the mighty is. Yes, says Terence. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Yeah. Yep, Terence has got a thousand X. He gets his microscope out and he reviews some cannabis if you are uh, interested. I can promote him. He's a nice fella. Any thoughts on the plenty? Says GMF. Yes, the plenty, it's a lesser version down than it. It's got the coil in it and it's not as attached to the mighty. I would think it would work just as good, but I have zero experience with it. I have the volcano, which I swear by, and the mighty, which I swear by when I don't have my volcano turned on. So when it's because the volcano you have to plug in, where the mighty, it's portable. And I really do swear by them. It's great. Someone called Steve-O rates the plenty hard. Yep. Mighty. It's German technology. So Storks and Brickle are a company from Germany that really have put a lot of effort into these machines. And they, the two that I've tried, really work. Tad State and Sico. There you go, mate. Tiny Mighty 2 is a lot better than the Mighty Plus. There you go. He likes the Tiny Mighty 2. Excellent. That's good. Glad to see you found something that works too, mate. Uh, he was telling me how epic it is. Yep. Cheers, Cloudy. I'm happy with what I got. That's good. What do you see? See how one of have. Oh, Jeanette Mary Farms says or asks, have one of those from some land race from, oh, he has a dominant DWF gene. One foot tall and that is all. Wow. Isn't that full on? It's not, yeah, it's very hard. It's some people, you, there's so many ways to grow and do things and so many different outcomes you can expect. So some people will, might would use that as an asset. You might uh, cross it, for instance, with a sativa and with a straight sativa, and then you might want the DWF to be dominant. So instead of you getting a 15 foot tree, you're going to get a normal six to seven foot indica size plant. And um, that would be a nice hybrid. So that's one way where you might want to use that to your advantage because breeding has all different types of characteristics and functionalities to whoever you want. What's, what they say? I don't know about the tiny mighty two. Wow. Yeah, I didn't even know about the tiny mighty two either putting out new stuff all the time because they've made so much money because it's top dollar for those vaporizers. Um, I suppose they can put it back into research and development. But yeah, that's some good information, mate. Thanks for that tiny mighty two up. Um, this has been good. I've wanted to grow that death bubba a while. I used to watch GML a lot. Ah, says martial artist. <laughs> really, mate? Yes. That's one of my favourite... Keepers is Pink Death Bubba, and that's Island Pink with its 
It was from BC as well. I've crossed Island Pink with Death Bubba, and Death Bubba had some. It had some genetic manipulation from radiation, X-rays and stuff, so that it was modified its gene code. That's why it comes out expressing differently some different things. But when I've crossed it, I've tried to bring out the original because I know what the original like. I grew it many times when I lived in Canada and try and express that. So with the pink death bubba, uh, I've got the – it's dank and rank like the original GML's dank death bubba. But, yeah, I've got um, – I think S2s I'm up to with that. I should probably – they're probably about – I cracked some – actually, I don't want to talk about that. I want to grow death bubba. You've got a high chance next year, mate. If all's legal in Australia, I can um, – I'll be giving, doing a seed giveaway each week and whatever you suggest is whatever I'll put up probably. And I've already got permission off GML to just to get rid of that. He even said I could sell the seeds because um, I know GML. Two strains. How are you, two strains? The Mighty 2 is, almost, is the most powerful vape available. And it has a two-year warranty. Wow, good stuff. Jeez, I've got to have to look into this. So two people today have suggested the Mighty 2. No, Tiny Mighty. Tiny Mite 2. That's cool. Good information. Thank you. Because that will help out people who are on a budget. And as you know, medical cannabis costs so much. And being in ACT, you can grow it, but that's about it. So it's, um, yeah, these devices that help you stay where you want. All the, you know, from eyes open to eyes closed like me. They help. So thanks for the information, people. Uh, that's good. Put on your two strains. Was martial artist. Wow, I don't know is what it was, a Frankenstein plant. Um, no, no, my, I was, um, I, I got the cut in BC and his cut is sweet as, it's fine. He's actually even got, uh, I suppose I can say that. He's even clean the genetics. So he's gone and put it through um, tissue culture and like I was saying before, replacing all of the endophytes inside of it and cleaning it. So you go and do a little bit of tissue culture, meristem culture, and then you grow it and then give it back to him. And that's what he's got. And so he's got the, a clean version as well because um, some systemic pesticides, all those types of things, you know, it's just good to clean genetics. So that's how you do it. And his original cut is fine. It was, uh, it was actually originally called Jesse's Bubba. But um, the short store owner named it Death Bubba, so they stuck with it. And what else about the death? I was just getting to. That's right. It was when I I crossed it, I bred with it and created some S1s. And then those seeds were transported. And when they get x-rayed, they got x-rayed, you know. So that means it induces a genetic modification and it changes it. So, um, unfortunately, I wasn't the receiving end of that. So, um, yeah, you just this means that's why Australia's got a lot of um, bastard weed because of that reason. People just get them sent here through the mail and they just um, come through, get x rayed, and it alters their genetic DNA. And they get all these different characteristics coming out. So, Lene says, Yes, thank you. I'll be checking the Tiny Mighty too. Yeah, I'll be checking it too. Thank you, people, for saying that. Genetic Memory Farms says, I only see three portable products on the website, Crafty Plus, Mighty Plus, and Mighty. Don't see what the differences are, but I don't see two. Ah, the Crafty is, it's got the spiral thing to it, and the Mighty and Mighty Plus, the Mighty Plus is the new version of the Mighty. So the old Mighty, it has a different charging thing, and the new Mighty, it's got USB charging, and you can take the temperature up five degrees hotter. And the Mighty Plus also comes out with um, these cool little uh, dosing capsules where you just pack heaps of dosing capsules and take them with you so you don't have to get the Mighty dirty. And um, it's an easy way to transport it. Yeah, uh, I saw that GMF probably why I don't see it either. Uh, what's, can you tell us more, people, about the... Tiny Mighty 2, please. Um, let's say, actually, I'm just going to, I'll Google it. Tiny Mighty 2. 
tiny. Two, there it is. Let's have a look at this thing. What? Uh, I'll share my screen. That looks like, what? That looks like my vape pen that I had. Uh, I'll go back and share screen. Present, share screen. Oh, Two Strain says, the mighty Tiny Might 2 is a completely different company from Finland. There's a couple left in Australia if you want one. Anything less sells. All right, I'll show you what I have from, see if this agrees with you. See here, Tiny Might 2. That's the that's that's my old vape I used to have, exactly the same thing. Okay, I'll go images, image search, so we can see. Ah, oh, so it's not as tall as in Brickle. Okay. Okay. Oh look. Here's a this is what we're just discussing. Tiny Might 2 versus the Mighty. What a spin out. That's pretty cool. Let's see what they're saying. Come on, because this is the topic that you guys are interested in, you guys and girls. Tiny Mite 2. Tiny Mite 2 is badass portable vape with high performance full convection heater. Okay. Yeah, removable 1860, where the Mighty Plus has two removable battery, uh, two batteries in it that are not removable. They're, to be honest, they're a pain to get out because I've, my Mighty. I had to replace the batteries. Okay, so here's another option. The Tiny Might one is 250. Tiny Might two is 350. Intense taste, two stems. Yeah, the, how's the cleaning bit? That's the only other thing. The Mighty cleans well. So can you guys and girls answer me about that? Have you guys cleaned it yet? Because it might be hard to clean. I know that the Mighty Things good. Fast charging USB on the Mighty 2. Okay. So it's about 200 bucks difference. Cheap, $200 cheaper. Excellent. If it works, it blooming works. Let's see what they've um, written. Uh, I think it's actually the crafty, no, no way. Finish cool. That's the one, it says two strains. Oh, wow. Okay. Thanks for looking at that. You're welcome. I paid 225 for my packs with discount. I, the packs is easy to clean. Yeah. That's one thing you've got to really consider because when it comes to cleaning time, no one likes them to clean. So it's um, hard. But here it comes. Very interesting. Thanks. Two Strain says, Tiny Mite is 550 in Australia. No. Really? Oh, that's US dollar. Oh my. Okay. So it's the same price as the Mighty, the Tiny Mighty. How does, hey, two strains, how does it clean, mate? Does it, um, do you find it easy to clean it? Well, have you cleaned it yet? Because I've, well, oh, maybe, what, every 100 sessions, I'd have to clean the Mighty every 100. I haven't really noted it down, but it's every, yeah, period, I've got to clean the mighty. Everything's so expensive. But I can really say with um, the price difference that you pay a bit extra, like the packs, you might pay 300 Australian, and the mighty, you might pay 550 Australian. Um, it's well and truly worth it because within one month, you've got to be saving probably 100 bucks just in cannabis use. Um, that's my personal opinion. Good health for everybody. I hope you have good health. That's what the show is all about, trying to promote good health. So that's why I didn't mind us talking about this topic. Oh, here we go. The cleaning procedure of the Tiny Mighty 2. Two Strain says it's one minute in ISO. It's done. No way. One minute. So there you go. It's really good too. Hey, King B. Farn. How you going, mate? Tiny Mighty 2. Is 540. So King B finds into the Tiny Mite 2 as well. That's cool. Very good. Safe vaping for everybody. Hey, just while you guys are here too, 
Uh, I'm doing a video this week to explain all about the, the ridiculous drama. You'd be very interested because I'm providing uh, bank records and some yeah notes, not just out of the mouth, like my shows. They're all slides and proof and truth. So we can get back to good cannabis stuff. I hate the drama. Yeah, that's cool. Wow. Sweet says, Lene, I agree. The tiny mite too. And with one minute to clean in ISO, you know what? I think that's actually faster. But I reckon that's faster because I've got to take it off. And if I soak it in ISO and then clean it out, I've got to go through at least one, two, I reckon about four or five cotton buds, double-ended cotton buds with ISO as well. So if you to do it in one minute, mate, that's rad. We might have a competitor, Mighty Plus. Uh-oh. <laughs> Earth King be fine. I'm, going, he's, I'm buying one right now. I'm off. See ya. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Um, six says Cloud Skate Mysterio. Mysterio. Two strains says Tiny Mite 2 is portable, is a portable desktop. Tiny Mite 2 is a portable desktop. Oh. What's that? Shout out King Be Fine. Yeah, you shout out King Be Fine. G'day, mate. The, I'll put up a, a photo again of the, I'll share my screen of that Google search that I did because it doesn't look like a desktop. It looks like it's a portable two strands. Um, what do you mean, mate? See this thing? I thought that was it there. Have I got the wrong image? Uh, I can scroll down here. No. See if there's any desktop stuff. No, that's all right. Look at this bloke with his little, um, he's, he's gone and made one out of leather. He needs a little cannabis leaf on the front. I suppose that might bring attention to it. Um, or he might, yeah, it doesn't look like a desktop. I'll just go back. He's probably might have clarified something. Um, live background, King B is an absolute, yep. It even has beast mode. Uh, that's funny. Vaping question, says GMF. If you use a bag, can you reclaim the stuff that sticks to the inside of the bag for edibles? I think I'd prefer a whip and hose otherwise. Great question. Uh, no, because it's the same stuff that is in the after vape material in the Mighty, for instance. It's a, it comes out like a fulvic acid color. It's real honey-like, like, like um, yellow, like a white tea, a light tea, like a light urine. And when I put my microscope under it, um, up to it, I can see a lot of hairs and other contaminants. And for that reason, I didn't get into it because being an oil or a resin, it sticks together and it sticks everything together. So anything that was in the air at that time when you sucked in, is gone and stuck into the onto the oil on the side of it. So um, you can, yeah, it's to, it would have properties. It would have medicinal or a terpene properties still left in there, but uh, it can its contamination's high. Uh, yeah, it's about the best way I can put it. So yeah, you can do it, mate. But um, same with the, the bags, the volcano bags. I make my own, and they rarely get gummed up before they split. So one of mine will last about two months and I smoke heaps. So um, yeah, the last two months from eyes open till eyes shut closed each day, you know, eight or 10 sessions, it gets up this tarry stuff on the outside and you can scrape it, but it's actually, what happened? We smoked that a while ago. I tried it or something. But under the microscope, it does have properties. That's what I reckon. I don't want to go on about it. Good question though, GMF. Thanks for the question, mate. Yes. It's like, oh, sorry, clarification for it. it. Hits like a desktop. Yeah, hits, so yeah. Like Lene said, it's a portable desktop because it hits like a desktop. That's cool. Okay, no worries, mate. It hits like a desktop. So, all right, so there's, that's gotta be um, the, Tiny Mighty 2, a few people use it and it hits like a desktop. Nice one. What's Dave say? Hey, Ozzy, maybe you should go back to starting at 10.30. There are more people in here now. Ah, good point. Yeah. Yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind starting a smidgen later. What does everybody else think? 
would they prefer me to start it at uh, at ten thirty? Because I don't mind doing that one bit, Dave. Let's see what a few other people say yes. The time's changed. Critter says new one from Storks called Plenty. Looks cool. Yeah, the Plenty. It's I've never used it. I've heard people that swear by it as well. It's got that little coil thing on it, hasn't it? Uh, and it's a little bit cheaper. There's also the Crafty as well, which is um, it's like the smaller version of the Mighty, and I've never used that one either because I just had the Mighty and it works really rad. So I just kept, you know, I replaced my Mighty. I got another Mighty, didn't replace it actually. They sent me one. They wanted me to do a review on it. Storks and Brickle from Germany. Um, runtime also. Don't know what that means. Dang. I can't keep up. I'll definitely check the plenty. Yeah, I don't know about, yeah, I suppose. For the mouthpiece. Okay, for Saturday. It's afternoon for me, but yeah, okay. It's one person says, but yeah. No one likes early, but to be honest, <laughs> it's getting cold here. Sure is. We are staying in bed longer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Because of the winter phase. All right, Dave's called it. The winter phase is going to be 10.30 from now on. Even Ned Kelly loves it. So three people. Right, I'm 16 on here at the moment or listening. So, um, yep, 20%. So that's fine. That's about the average profit a business should make. Well, I did an entrepreneur course. Entrepreneurship. It's the go. Anyway, back to it. Sorry. For the time's changed. Good stuff. Thank you. Um, I can title today's show. Uh, oh, another video question. Yeah, I was just going to title it Vaporizers. GMF's got another question. What temperature do you run your volcano? Gen Genetic Memory Farms asks. The plenty maxes out at 202 C and the volcano hits 230 C. Does that upper temperature register make a big difference? Yes, mate, massively. Okay, don't buy the plenty. Definitely don't buy the plenty. Uh, it's been going for a while, but I'm going to pull up this one chart because this is, I know where the chart is. It's secondary metabolites and under plant science, secondary metabolites. And it is the, what chart was it again? Oh, that's right, the volatilization chart. Where is that? This one, Celsius and Fahrenheit, so both people can understand. Yes, all right, I'm gonna just, just, we'll go through this. A few shows ago, I did a vaporizer special and I went through this extensively on terpenes uh, and cannabinoids. And this is a bit of a summary for that because GMS is a good bloke. And all you other people in the cannabis community are really good too. Sitting there politely, just doing your thing, contributing. Thank you. Uh, this one. So here, so if your device only goes up to 205, you're missing out on the THCV and the CBC, which does have little properties in it. But the THCV... Um, well, they reckon it blocks, blocks THC, but um, there's still other, and there's terpenes, and I'll go to another chart later on too, and it shows the terpene volatilization. The Dutch Cannabis College, there, uh, if you Google it, to get into there, there's a pre questions at the start of it, and in their 10 questions, this is what it used to be anyway. Um, what was it again? Uh, what is the vaping temperatures for good health? And... It's the answer is 190 to 210 Celsius. So 190 is, what's that, 380 Fahrenheit odd to 210. So that's about 410 Fahrenheit. So that's what they reckon. And the reason being, because see in the center here, you start to release benzene and other harmful hydrocarbons at certain temperatures. And they say it's here, it's 205. I've actually got a volatile organic compound meter, a digital one, that registers hydrocarbons, alcohol, methanols, all those types of things, and I haven't seen it at this temperature. I have seen it at the temperature of above about 225 Celsius or 435 Fahrenheit in my volcano. It sends it off the chart. 
if I mortar and pestle up my after vape material, put it in real thick, turn it up real high, it'll combust it and it'll release a very, very thick smoke and it tastes different and it sets off my meter bad, meaning that it's hazardous, it's pollutant, it's got toxic elements that have been carbonized in it. Uh, so that's the safety bit. But back to the question of if it doesn't go over 205, what can it do? Uh, where's it? All right. I'll go to another chart. It's got terpenes in it, terpene temperature. Uh, there's all the different terpenes. Here we go. So you've got ter terpene and all. It still is a terpene and it smells like terp, uh, methylated spirits type thing. That's the terpene. And if you wanted to unlock its sedative, antibiotic, antioxidant or anti-malarial effects, you'll want to get your vaporizer up to 220 Celsius or 428 Fahrenheit. So that's an example of where it, it can't do before. And down here for the cannabinoids, again, it's just showing the 220 for CBC and THCV with its anti-inflammatory properties and euphoric properties from THCV. So uh, that's just touching briefly on it. I can go on and show you more different terpenes that are volatile above the 200 mark. But um, I, my temperatures, that was the other question. My first bag's at 190 Fahrenheit, 190 Celsius, because that's the terpene bag. My second bag's at 203 Celsius, which sort of picks everything up. And the third bag, just to clean up the scraps, is 223, I think I put it at. Yeah, just beneath that level, so it doesn't set off my bad meters. Uh, hope that helps, Gina. Or everybody else, another question. Thanks for that. You're welcome, buddy. Good info, Gina. Yes, some very knowledgeable people in the industry. Happy to help. I want to stop smoking. Do you want to stop smoking cannabis, or do you want to smoke, stop smoking tobacco, Gina? Or do you want to just stop combusting cannabis and vaporizing only, or just edibles only. Uh, G'day, Wombat Organics, how's it going? How can you rip for 20, and okay, he's gonna get a timeout. If, message deleted, thank you. If you're going to, the drama will be explained, if you want to take one side with story, nobody has ever said my side of the story, mate. So if you're going to jump onto the bandwagon with one side of the story, go for it and don't come around here anymore. Otherwise, if you'd like to hear my side of the story, listen later this week and I'm going to put out a video explaining my side of it and you'll be very interested to see all because I only put up facts and the things that happen. I'm a man of my word. So you'll see the truth. <laughs> not just a make-believe, exaggerated mess that two people have created. It's really, it's sad. And it, for you to follow it, anyway, I'm not going to say, it's just really sad. Anyway, back to it. You can't choose individual temps on the packs. Oh, it's just four settings. See, that's another thing that's not very beneficial because if you want to get the best out of it, how can you really, say if you're too sick today and you only want the sedative terpenes, so that means you might only take it up to 195 and you know above that it'll unlock other antis terpenes but below it it'll re release the ones that you want so you can really use it to your advantage by dialing in a number i feel that's a shame about the packs four but they still look good though <laughs> looks like i'm going to need to upgrade again yeah it's, it's a nuisance isn't it all these things I like how you handle yourself with this. You bring receipts. Yeah, mate. These other people, they're just shooting off at the mouth. And like that person, um, Nexus, he's not even a professor. So, yeah. Anyway, I don't get on with drama. It's just to see how we don't need to create problems. All it does is create problems. We should all just be sticking together, regardless of how they've lied or what's happened, you know, that's, anyway, that's what I'm about. I'm, life's too short. <laughs> Think that, anyway. Yeah, mate, that's right. Exactly. Uh, 
Ah. Yeah. Not too stable either. Yes. All right. Well, today's show, thank you, can be labelled pests and diseases in medical cannabis because I briefly touched on them with the botanicals and different things that are more prevalent. And then the later half was the discussion on vaporisers. So it's been cool. So thanks, everybody. And there's the new show, time to the show. So it looks like from next uh, winter, it'll be um, for the rest of the, the Southern Hemisphere's winter, it'll be starting at 10.30 a.m. So half an hour, 35 minutes ago now, I would have normally been starting. Yeah, interesting. And to touch on the people who are listening, like Wombat Organics and stuff, you, you're welcome. Everybody's welcome. I just feel sad for the people that want to be gullible and believe one side of story and think so lowly of me that I could go and do the things that have been described. I have no money to anybody. It's just sad on what how people can make stories up and people just go and stick with them. You'll see later in the week. If there's any questions, I'll just I'll briefly touch on them. Otherwise, I don't like getting into drama because it's rot. I can hold my head high. I did the right things. So I'm um, yeah. <laughs> back to it. GMF has got a PAX in trade and do not really enjoy it. Go to walk the dog. Oh, he's got to walk the dog. Talk to you in a bit. Much love, peeps. Be safe and happy. Yeah, thanks, GMF. Thanks for your contribution, mate. You're always welcome. Yes, and with that too, it's been going for an hour 36 again. Wow, thank you. And I'm going to start like you suggested next week. Good on you, Dave. It's the 10.30 a.m. start. <laughs> Very good. So thank you again for everybody putting in the effort and keeping the peace. That's what it's about. Yeah, that's right. Life's too short. Heaps of plant, soil science and microbiology to discuss. Heaps more slides to show. And next semester, I'll be studying different new courses as well. And I've already seen one of them. What was the new one? Oh, I just love the list. I get, went through the list a while ago and got excited. So, wow, well, I haven't done that course yet. I can't wait to do it. So it's another one that relates to medical cannabis that's going to help us bring out the genetic potential and to what we want for it to suit our bodies. So you cultivars, you can create soon and agree with what's you with what suits you. Yes. Yes, I feel pretty much the same. Yes, much love to everybody. That's what GMF said. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, today. I appreciate you all trying and bringing your questions here and listening to me. <laughs> Good stuff. I'll see you next, same time next week. Actually, not same time. It'll be an hour later next week in seven days' time again. And I'm going to put that video out through the week um, showing all of the drama that happened in Australia and the ridiculousness about it. I'm not, I don't put people down because it's up to you to make up whatever you say, whatever you decide. Uh, but <laughs> you can just see the facts and then you just spin out and go, wow. And then you can Google uh, what's it, Dr. Nexus, Dave Potter, and you'll see, oh, my goodness, he wasn't ever or even a professor. Did you know that you have to be – I'm not going to talk about it here – but it's just sad how, uh, yeah, I want to stick together with the community and create a nice community. At least we know some rotten eggs that aren't welcome now. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for hanging. Appreciate it. Soil microbiome. Yeah, have to see, see what next week's soil microbiome. I think I'm going to do soil microbiome. That's an interesting course, microbes within the soil. Yes, environmental biotechnology. Uh, that's a cool course. If you want more discussion on that, bring some questions and I'll be more than happy to elaborate on those because I love microbes. I've done a four or five microbe university courses and I'm getting quite good at it. So I've got a lot of slides that can get the questions explained, hopefully. So yeah, please think of stuff for titles of the show. But um, that soil microbiome course, that's good. Good luck, Critter. Yes, thanks. Have a chill day, says Lene. Thank you. Good on your martial artist. Thanks for your support, mate. 
Okay, everybody, have a great week. See you then, Dave. Yes, you've said it, Dave. See you then. 10.30, your time. <laughs> yep, thanks, Lene. Thanks, everybody who rocked up and contributed. Very good. Even Wombat Organics, because, you know, it's a question that's unanswered because he's only heard one side of the story. So I do understand. It's just we'll see it all soon. So have a good week, everybody. Happy breeding, happy growing, and good health to you all. Bye-bye.